The simplest choice of a moment, what street to take, which way to turn, can change a life forever. In Frankfort, Kentucky, actors have helped to set the scene for our next story. But most of the footage you'll see was taped on the afternoon of August 4th, 1989, when a twist of fate brought six lives together in tragedy at the base of Louisville Hill. A loaded truck just can't negotiate that curb going 40, 45 miles an hour. Something's going to happen if they come down there too fast. Eight-year-old Brandon Moravchik's music camper Seidel had just let out. His state trooper father put his family in their car and sent them on their way to lunch. He's trained, being a state police officer, to work these type of situations. But when you've got your wife and your kids in an automobile accident, it's got to be a totally different situation. Belinda Sue Everman was heading to work at her part-time job. Somebody got my attention on the sidewalk and waved me on up to the first car that the little 17-year-old girl was in. That's the first one that I started working on. Jane and Jerry Bailey were also going to lunch. When we arrived on the scene, the, the BFI truck's back wheels were right up against the Bailey car. And we kept looking at the top because it was totally sunk in. It's a total U-shape. And we finally figured out the tires had set down on the top and then bounced out. All three cars were approaching Louisville Hill from the bottom when the tow truck coming down the hill lost its brakes. It swung into the sharp turn at the bottom, out of control. As it came around the curve, the garbage truck was thrown onto the three cars, crushing them. The first thing we saw as soon as we come down the hill and make the turn was one car just about flat. Then you could see the other two cars in behind them, and they were flat, two of them and rolled over. When you first get there, you have to put something in your mind to take away the helpless feeling because you really feel helpless. I thought, well, there's no point being in no hurry. There's nobody living here. And then, then after finding out that everybody was still living but trapped, it was just, it was unbelievable. All right, back y'all. Back y'all. Get out here. You know for sure that you're going to have some type of neck and back injuries in that type of accident. Pinned inside the crushed maroon sedan, Kimberly Morovchik was worried about her children. He's okay. Huh? No, honey, he's fine. He's over in the car. I've been talking to him. He's fine. Do you have any information about the mother? Both children had already been pulled out of the wreckage. First thing I, uh, I took care of was the baby. It was just covered with glass. It had glass around its eyes and face and everything. But I didn't see anything major that was wrong with the child. Kimberly's older son, Brandon, had been put in a patrol car. We weren't aware that the eight-year-old was even involved until we went to the police car, and he was, in fact, laying fairly still, complaining with the lower right abdominal pain, and you could see the marks on him where the seat belt had made its impression. A passing nurse, Debbie Souther, had stopped to help Jane Bailey, buried under the roof of the black sedan. She felt alone and isolated. She couldn't understand what was going on. And basically, I stayed with Jane and talked to her, held her hand and told her, you know, it would be all right. Cooper Greg Morovchik had been called to the scene of an accident involving his family. When I first saw the car and Kimberly being in there and there was a couple of police in there and some other people, I just didn't think anybody was going to be alive. Of course, I ran over there, and one of the firemen asked me, Greg, how do you know this woman? And I said, this is my wife. I didn't want to lose my, my loved one. And the only thing I could let her know that I was there and just hold on to the hand and squeeze. When the roof of Belinda's car was pried off her body, rescue workers were ready to move her. She was probably drifting in and out of consciousness, which was probably best for her because when she would come to, that's when you'd hear the, the screaming and we were trying to get a seat collar on her and, and get her on the backboard. And once we got her out of the car, other people took over and, and got her in the ambulance. So I took the equipment I had and, and went to the other cars and see what else needed to be done. Okay, that's easier to the forward. Get a back forward. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to stand back. Get forward for me now. Lay your hand flat on to reach Jane Bailey, they had to cut off the top of the black car. 
the way she was laying, the seat had broken down and was laying flat, and she was all the way into the back seat. So uh, immediately we expected uh, to find back and neck injury, so we treated such. You don't remove the patient from the car. You just tear the car away from the patient, extricate them, and uh, try to move them without doing any more harm. The only way to get her out of the car was they were having to take her over her seat and through the back seat and out where the back windshield was that they'd cut away and uh, had a person holding traction on her and we're sliding the uh, backboard up underneath of her and we're just trying to steadily slide her up on the backboard to get her on that. Jane's neck had been broken by the impact when the garbage truck slammed into her car. Like her husband, she was taken to a nearby hospital. The last victim left to be removed was the trooper's wife. I had asked for a sheet from one of the firemen to cover it up, and I'll never forget this. Some young fellow, and I, I won't forget his face, but uh, I don't know who he was, asked me if he wanted my, his shirt. I was going to peel it off to give it to me to cover her face, and the fireman had just came there with the, uh, the sheet, and so we covered Kimberly's face and uh, keep him in the glass. Here he had his wife trapped in an automobile. He knew one of his kids was hurt pretty bad. I'm not sure if I could have handled the situation as well as what Greg handled the situation. Kimberly kept asking me, Brandon and Justin, are the boys okay? She wasn't concerned with herself. And, you know, just letting her know that, that I loved her and that, you know, the boys were okay. And that was reassuring to her and that we'd get her out. And we did. Because the rescuers got all the victims to hospitals within one hour, their odds for survival were dramatically increased. Though Jane Bailey's neck was broken and Jerry lost an eye, they both escaped with their lives. And we thanked the Lord several times a day in the last month that we are still here. My doctors and the nursing staff had told me that they handled me with such great care and that if the slightest wrong move and I could have ended up paralyzed. And I just can't thank them enough for that. The thing I was looking forward to the most would be getting a hug from my daughter. Because I can't get a hug right now. And that's the worst part. Because even though she's six years old, she just doesn't understand everything that's going on. In the impact, Belinda Sue Everman's face had been crushed. Her arm, wrist, and several ribs were broken, and one lung collapsed. But in less than two months, she's made a remarkable recovery. I do appreciate the rescue workers for saving my life, because they knew the right ways to handle me. Not to hurt me any worse than I was already hurt and he had to handle me, so I have to give it credit to them, <laughs> great credit. After the surgery is on her own badly broken leg, Kimberly Moravchik moved into her eight-year-old son's hospital room. The strength of the Moravchik family has been amazing. Not only has the father been here from the very beginning, from the time Brandon was brought over, he's always there when you come to make rounds, morning, night, any time of day or night. The mother has also been amazing. She's not left Brandon's side since she was released from the hospital. Again, this kind of strength and courage has to translate over to Brandon. Because the trooper's son was in the police car when the paramedics arrived, it was some time before anyone realized he had serious internal injuries. He's still recovering from a punctured bowel. Well, since my mommy's here, it really cheered me up a whole, whole lot. I'm pretty lucky that I'm not hurt any worse than I was. What did Dr. Bell say about school? He didn't say nothing to me. He's had really basically three surgeries, and as for an adult, he, you know, they'd be a lot harder to handle, but uh, kids bounce back. But he's a little man. He's a little man in a boy's body. You know, he's got a lot of love for an eight-year-old. Don't run on my toes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to 
going home and having Justin and Brendan and Greg and myself in our house, our home. And I'm looking forward to getting back to normal. I'm, actually, I'm looking forward to getting back in a car and putting Justin and Brandon in a car and heading to have another day like we were having that day. We didn't think we were going to end up with one person alive. Looking at the way the cars were, like I said, you wouldn't think anybody ever had a chance to come out of it, much less all of it. Next, the...